Hallelujah. So today we're talking about reconcile through repentance. Reconciliation, repentance. Two words, my brother. You can find reconciliation. And we say, yes, I'm reconciled with God. I have this relationship with Him and He's great, it's good. But you know, reconciliation without repentance is some other cheap, cheap, cheap walk with God. Cheap where I, Jesus is a name, and I, but it's cheap. I can pray, but it's cheap. I can, I can be busy with God, but it's superficial. Unless there's something called repentance as part of my lifestyle. There was a day where there was repentance in your life, my brother, my sister, and that repentance was the biggest miracle, biggest miracle ever, ever that happened and ever, ever to happen in your life was the day when you gave your life to Christ. But you know that repentance was not because, oh, 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 I'm scared of hell, I don't want to go and burn in hell. So let me see what, what strategy is there to get out of hell, uh, not to burn in hell forever. Uh, let me accept Jesus. Who gave the lives to Christ because of that? Uh-uh. What happened? Something opened up for you. You saw something of the heart of God. You saw something of who God is. You saw the love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that you, if you believe in him, will not perish but have eternal life. It was about relationship. Repentance always in the context of reconciliation for relationship. Repentance without the context of relationship is some other freaky religious stuff. Some demon of religion that want to put you under laws, 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 laws in your life. But repentance only has any form, has a type of a meaning in the context of relationship. But you find guys out there in the world, based on the law, okay, they, they know, oh, I need to repent. I not, must not drive 190, but 160, or even less, I think. Hey. Oh, you're all asleep. Thank you very much. I don't take it personal. Right. What am I saying? Based on the law, there's a lot of things that I can repent. And by a lot of the law out there is so that you are protected against yourself and so that other people are protected against you. If you do a lot of rubbish, if you steal, if you this, if you kill, if you what, if you drive like a maniac on the wrong, wrong side of the road. It's for your protection and other people's protection. But that's laws, that's repentance that must come for a certain purpose. But there's a repentance in the word that is in the context of relationship. You don't repent because you have a relationship with a speed cop. Hopefully not. Okay. But bec you understand what I'm saying? Okay. Repentance and relationship. For that, there's reconciliation. Now I can struggle my whole life uh, with repentance. Repentance. I need to repent. And then every time I hear the word, it's just spanking. It's just spanking. Like we talked about, evaluate, question your quality. Just before this, that you need to question your quality. But when you question the quality of your works, question the quality of your life out of the context. Because Father loves you and Father brings discipline on your life. He accepts. He brings discipline on every child that he believes is not a fake, that he's not an illegitimate child, but he's a genuine child of God. For that child, God brings discipline because he loves him. Now if that is, you are in that place of questioning the quality, then you must understand there's repentance for reconciliation. And the biggest reconciliation was for you to have a life with God. But why? Why? After repenting and give your life to Christ, when then you come into this lifestyle with God, many times we are repenting so that I'm not be in trouble anymore, but out of trouble. So that I do the right thing, not the wrong thing. So that I will be okay. No. The whole context of repentance from the start was for you to come in a more quality, deep relationship with the Lord. So it must be tomorrow. So it must be today. So it must be while you are sitting here and you hear things and you know this is not right. You change things in your heart. You make decisions in your head, in your heart right now. And you come in a better quality, meaningful relationship with God. It's for relationship. Repentance is for relationship. Amen. So I have the guts to question your quality, the quality of your works, so that you can come into the place where we say from A all the way we work through is building blocks, building on one another, building on one another. Make sure it's part of your life. 
okay, so that we can have a, not a fake repentance, but a true repentance before the Lord. First, first uh, scripture. Remember then. Everybody say remember. remember. Remember then from what heights you have fallen. Repent. Change the inner man to meet God's will and do. Everybody say do. Do. Do the works you did previously when first you knew the Lord. Remember. In the remember, my brother and my sister, there's, do, there's two spirits. The Holy Spirit wants you to remember so that you can be condemned, so that you will be reminded of your sin. Rubbish. God says, you better remember so that you can have an honest look at your life and change what needs to be changed. You cannot repent if you don't realize you are in the wrong. If you are deceived and the, and the comedy from the devil... That he look at because you are deceived. You don't even know you are in the wrong. That's that. You think you're right. You can justify yourself. There's a lot of things that will show you if you are honest or not. If you are easily justifying yourself. Easily stirred. If I can say like that. You know there's some stuff that you need to deal with. Hey. But there's no repentance. There's some fake cheap repenting sentence that I can throw. But if I don't first come into the place of have an honest look at my life and remember what happened, from that place I come to God so that I come with brokenness and humility. But in the same place, if you're not going to allow the Holy Spirit to help you to remember what must adjust, what must, when must there come an adjustment through repentance, hell and the devils, will remind you so that you can stay discouraged, so that you can feel condemned, so that you will go into Christian performance to do the thing right, and maybe I will get it right now this time. And all that other spirits and and hojas will start to speak to you if you don't allow the Holy Spirit in your memory, in your memory of what was right, what was wrong. What was right, and the Holy Spirit says, the grace of God, give him all the glory. And you remember what was wrong, and the Holy Spirit says, this you need to repent, this you need to learn from, this you need to change, so that we have quality relationship ahead. As you walk with Father in the name of Christ. Are you with me? Reconcile through repentance. Remember, remember. And then if you remember, then repent. Don't repent if you cannot remember, if you cannot acknowledge what you did wrong. Repent. Change the inner man. So change needs to happen. Yeah, that is in the repentance. To do God's will, to do the works you previously did. You can do the works. We're talking about good works, dead works. Good works, dead works. If you question your quality and you are open for the Holy Spirit and you remember certain things, amen. Who knows? Self-condemnation can take you away, away from God. When you condemn others, when you point the finger, you have no good works that you can do. Always this issue, always that issue, always this is wrong, that is right. That... Okay, sit in that place. But the Holy Spirit is not with you there. Are you here? Are you still here? Do the works. Do the works God has called you to do. Next one. I have not found a thing that you have done, any work of yours, meeting the requirements of my God or perfect in his sight. <laughs> He's speaking to the church. He's not speaking to people that must give their lives to Christ. He's speaking about you and me. The seven churches in the time of revelation, in the season that we are going into, is God is first preparing his church for the end time, preparing his church for when heaven and earth will be shaken. And more and more you will see it. You will see the, the distorted sickness like we saw with some of the things at the Olympic Games. A uh, lot of stuff that will happen. Hell will manifest its, himself. Hell will manifest itself and, and whatever vulgar insanity will come from it. And the only hope that will manifest itself is a church that will say, on earth as it is in heaven. And that prayer will be fulfilled in an end time revival that you've never seen before. That so many times you will not testify. You will be shaken to the core that you, my brother, remember this prophecy. That you or whoever in the next generation will stand and they have no words to express what type of miracle God did now. It's too big. I don't have words for what God has done. 
that type of thing is going to happen. That's going to happen. That John 14, 12 of the works that I do, you will do. And greater works than these, you will do. That, that scripture must still be fulfilled. But that will be for a church who has the guts to humble themselves, to be protected in humility so that they can facilitate and see the power of God through their lives and not try to take the glory for themselves because humility will protect them. Those who have the guts to be honest, to realize, hey, some of the things I'm doing, it's not, it's not meeting the requirements. I'm not going to go into performance, but I need to see what is perfect in his sight. You can do a lot of things. You can do all the right things, but it's not perfect in his sight. God, how do you see things? You can do all the right things so that you're not in trouble. It's not perfect in his sight. You can be perfect in what, how you handle your, the situations in your life. And it's not perfect in his sight. The rich young man, all these things I do, Lord. When he said, how, what must I do to be saved? Jesus said, you must do this, 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 this. The rich man said, yes, that's all I do. I do all this, 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 this. And then Jesus said, one thing you lack. How did Jesus know that? Because in his sight, he knew certain things. The word says, and Jesus loved the rich man and nailed him. Jesus loved him and said, one thing you lack. One thing you lack. Go and sell everything. <laughs> that's not just one thing, that's everything. One thing you lack, go and sell everything. And then come and follow me. Oh, man. Why? Because God saw his heart was in the riches. Oh, you can, you can pray. And you can pray for your situation and for your breakthroughs for your situation. And prayer could be your servant for your situation instead of the honor to communicate between you and God and have a position before the Lord through prayer. Instead of that honor and that privilege and an amazing grace on you, you can try to use prayer just as some other manipulative tool. For God, help me in this, help me in this, help me in this, help me in this, and come and do this and come and do that. That's one of the hundred points of prayer. Yes. Making your requests known. But reconciled through repentance somewhere, I need to understand what I do tomorrow must not in 30 years be burned away. God, what I do wrong tomorrow must be burned away tomorrow. By your grace, please. Help me to be open for repentance. That now I will repent. Now I will change my ways. Are you still here? Okay, next one. Remember, everybody say remember. Remember. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Obey and repent. Remember what you have heard. My brother, my sister, unfortunately, for those who have heard a lot, they will stand accountable for a lot. If you heard the word more than once, so more intense, God, you stand accountable before God for what you've heard. Remember what you've had. Oh, but uh, hell can make sure that you remember the hurts. You remember the disappointment. You remember when you tried to speak about Jesus and he didn't work. You remember what you've done wrong. and uh, You remember when you tried to be on fire for the Lord and no, it didn't work. So now you're just the middle way. You know, type of, type of, type of okay on a Sunday, but type of okay in the weekend. Not too much sin in the weekend. And not too much excitement and commitment on a Sunday. If my commitment and my repentance on a Sunday for reconciliation is real, you got to have a certain way of walking in the week. Uh, when, when you do some recon when you know, with the books, you, you know that? With a business and you do a recon, it's like you look at all the sin in, in, in the business. Ach, rabbis me. Say, ach, rabbis. That recon is to check everything is fine and we are building accurately in our business. It's not going to be a hamors in one week, two weeks, or one year's time. Because we don't make, want to make a hamors, a lot of rubbish with our business. That's why we do recon. Now, so in our lives, for reconciliation is not out of trouble or in, of, in trouble. No, it's so that we can come into a place to have a healthy lifestyle, to build accurately, to make a... A living in Christ that has value. Amen. Good works, that works. Remember, therefore, 
what you've heard. Obey and repent. What you've heard, why? I cannot repent. Repent in, in, in the Greek means hunt, uh, turn around. Go into to the absolute diff- under other direction. But if you don't know the word, you don't know what to repent of because you, are, you can be deceived and think you're okay. Everything is okay because the other words of whatever thing is loud in your head. Those voices are loud. So you think looking at that rubbish, having that type of lifestyle, looking at that girl, that guy, or whatever in that way, that it's okay. It's, it's okay. You and some demons saying it's okay. Sharp. But when you have the guts to go look into the word and, say, and see what is okay, what is not okay, then repentance is something else. Because now you have a compass. You don't know what is a compass. Some of you guys know what that is. He's telling you something like, where's north? When you're on the open sea and there's, a, there's some trouble, there's, there's some big storm, and there could be some rocks, there could be something there. There's not a lighthouse there, but you must know where's north, where's south, so that you know where to go, because otherwise next moment the whole ship can be boom, smashed, crashed, crushed, whatever, gone. Okay, praise God. He has given you the compass to that you know where's north, where's south, where to go and where not to go. What way are you going to crash your life, crash your marriage, crash your relation, crash the, the finance of your business, whatever. There's a way to crash it and hell will make sure that you try. They will try their best for you to crash your life. They cannot crash you for eternity, but they can crash you now, at least before their time is over. But no, it's not going to happen in Jesus' name. Amen? Because by God's grace, we're going to get into the Word. And the more you get into the Word, the more you know the Word, the more you put the Word in your heart, the more you know that is north. And you going there, and there, or there, or there. And only if you know the Word, you know how to repent. You heard the word that God loved you so much and you didn't believe the lie that you were too much rubbish. God will never accept you and Christianity is just some other boring something, whatever, with a lot of rules. Take the fun out of life. You believe that those lies from hell, from whatever demons can speak to you. Okay. But when you start to see the word and you saw the truth, you repented and you came to God. God was the center of your repentance. Because he said, Jesus Christ, be my Lord and my Savior. I want to walk with you. I give you my heart. Come and live in my life. And from there, repentance is supposed to be in the same way. The north of the campus is, where is Christ in your emotions? What is Jesus saying about your emotions? What is Jesus saying about that opinion that you have? What is Jesus saying about that relationship? Is he the center of that relationship? Is Jesus saying in the relationship, yes, you can do that with that lady. Yes, you can do that with that guy. Yes, you can speak about that guy behind his back in that way. Jesus is speaking with you about that guy, the way that you speak about that guy or about that girl. He's speaking with you. He's laughing together with you for the jokes that you, that you make. That is telling you if you must repent or not. So either God is laughing with or some demons are laughing with. What a fake. Not you. Other people. What a joke, man. What a joke of a life. If you think you can tell that joke to that guy, but the only one laughing with you two guys is 49 demons or two demons or whatever. They're laughing not at the joke. They're laughing at you. For being so deceived that to think that it's okay to do that. No man. The repentance is for relationship. The repentance is not, not, not to be in trouble. It's for a relationship. And you need to see God's heart. So that you can know what is right in his sight. What is right in his eyes. Amen. Next one. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Pray. Seek my face. Turn from their ways. I will hear, forgive, and heal. Everybody say, my people, my my name. name. So first of all, are you God's people? Did you give your life to Christ? If you didn't give your life to Christ, then today you must make a decision. I want to give my life to him because he paid everything. He paid everything for me to be his. Hello? Are you with me? Decide. If you believe you are his 
people. Then you must understand whose name is called over you. In the name of Christ is over your life. In the name of Christ, every demon must flee. Every demon must flee. Are you with me? Every demon must flee. So uh, as long as you don't have respect for the name of Jesus, it's okay. You are his people. You're going to heaven. But at least hell can throw whatever at you because you, you're going to go. You are, you are submitted to the name of your opinion, to the name of what, what image you portray, to the name of what people call you. That teacher said you are stupid, man, and you are submitting to that name. You are na- submitting to that name and you try your best and to, to prove that you are not stupid. That one said you're never going to make it. Now you're working very hard and, and trying to make it because you are submitting by, unto that name that was called over your life. What people said that hurt you and you keep that hurt, you keep unforgiveness or you keep your, put yourself in that sadness trying to prove something because you have such an awesome respect for the name that that person in his foolishness gave over you. Or you decide, my brother, my sister, if you want to see healing, if you want to see a life reconciled with God here on earth, you decide there's only one name over my life. And what he says, that's what I believe. If he says, yes, you need to repent, then you need to repent. Even though that other guy said it in a pathetic way. But then you need to repent. But whatever he says, I'm under his name. The name above all names. And whatever hell brings to me, it must submit to the name above all names. Finish. Only if I respect his name. If I don't respect his name, whatever rubbish can walk over you, man. Again, why? The devil is, is nasty. No. I cannot say you are stupid. Uh, we were stupid in the past. We will never be in the future. Amen. That the devil can just do whatever he wants. Because we're going to find out who we are in his name. My people called by my name. If they, first of all, you cannot repent if you don't humble yourself. Once again, it's about have an honest look at your life. Have the guts to be honest. Don't justify yourself in your head and in your heart. Be careful. Be careful. Easily, sensitive, oversensitive, easily when somebody tells you, that's rubbish. Stop that. He oh, didn't say that in love. He pointed the finger at me. Okay. What about now you? Well, what about what he said? You bring it before the Lord and you hear from God. God, what do you say? Sometimes me and my wife, we had a, no, not a lot, some interesting discussions. And then once or twice or thrice, we, we rather decided, let's write a letter to one another. We were saying, stay in the house, but just write a letter, whatever you want to say to me. I think I told you about this one. One of the five times in my life of marriage, you know, nearly a half an, an hour. What is it, you? Yeah. And there was one letter. And he started with, hey, buddy. Woo! Then I realized, trouble, trouble is coming. <laughs> and then she said a lot of things. And if she said it in the conversation, hey, I would have interrupted 49 times and said, rubbish. <laughs> That's not the way I say it, but I would, whatever, man, are you with me? And so all these things that she wrote, I thought, machtig, Okay. <laughs> And then, you know what you do? What you're supposed to do if you go to God. Unfortunately, God will never tell you, you are right and he's wrong. Or she's wrong and you are right. He will never tell you that. There will always be something that you need to change. Unless your name is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So, so in what she said, I would, okay, try to find out. You know, a woman reasoning, you know. Yeah, all over the place. And then the Holy Spirit helped me. And you try to number one, two, three, about 12 points. And God speak to me about this, these points that she's making. And I get a scripture from me about H1. And oh. <laughs> with most of it, I had to put some repentance in. Because whatever, even she said it in a very freaky way sometimes, God will explain to me what she actually wanted to say. Ah, and it's normally not how right you are and how wrong she is. Never. Okay. So what I'm saying, my brother, my sister, 
Have the guts to humble yourself before the Lord. Amen. Whatever you've heard, just, just bring it before the Lord. Humble yourself. Question your quality, the previous one. We are now QR, reconciled through repentance. You cannot have true repentance if you don't, you're not open to questioning your, the quality of your works and what you do in your life. Okay, humility. When you humble yourself, you will not be humiliated by hell and people. Against the shame, against the shame and humiliation, what hell and world, the world can bring to you. What's your protection against that shame, that humiliation, that people will laugh at you, will, that you will stand ashamed before the Lord and before people? What is your protection? Humility. Against that humiliation, humility. But if some, because if somebody is already in brokenness because of mistakes in their lives and they look at the cross... Uh, hell can do nothing. Word of a cross is the power of God unto salvation. The cross is saying to, to the enemy, you've lost, you've lost, you've lost. Are you here? Humble yourself. When you come with honesty and humility and brokenness, Secondly, and pray. Not pray for everything to change, but pray in, is your positioning. Let's say prayer positioning. The privilege that you can have entrance into the throne room through the blood of Christ. Prayer, you can be, you can come before the throne of grace. Humility, you lay down, you're honest, but in honesty, you know, not run into condemnation and run away from God. No, you run to God through prayer. And in prayer, you can look at all the rubbish that you've done. You can focus on all the things that you've done. Or focus on all the things that must change. Or focus on all the things that God must please do. Or you can seek Him. Those who seek my face. Not those who seek the answers. Not those who seek the Lord for answers. Those who seek by faith that things will change. No, for those who seek Him. Those who wait on answers. No, those who wait on the Lord. Those who wait on Him. <sighs> they will receive power. Those who wait for new power. I trust, trust God for power. I trust God for strength. I trust, no, I trust God for new strength. Wait on the Lord and He will renew so your strength. But you need to focus on Him. Because many times we don't have strength. We don't have power. We are... We are down or we, are, we have, have no energy because of something that we actually need to repent of because we are doing things he never called us to do. And then we are tired because doing work that people expect or this one expect or what you think you were supposed to do but you were deceived or you just had followed your own whatever agenda. No, man. May God help you. May God help me. Humble yourself. Pray. You have this open communication with God and seek him. And when you seek him and you find him, then you can turn. Only then you can turn from your evil ways. You cannot turn from evil ways because you don't know he's evil. But the way where Christ is the center, you turn towards him. When you seek him, you will find him. And then you can repent because then you turn to him in your emotions, to him in your circumstance, to him in your huara huara relationship. And you say, God, help me. Amen. So the one who follows the other one. No genuine prayer if there's no humility. But when you humble yourself, God will lift you up. God will lift you up. He will bring you out. He will bring you out. But humble yourself and he will touch you. He resists the proud. He resists the ones. Hello? Focus. God help us. Amen. Humility. With the right heart, come before the Lord in prayer. You seek Him, and when you find Him in what you have, and where He is, how, how will I find Him? Look in the Word, who He is. And then you know, you will not find Him in a lie. You will not find Him in deception. You will not find Him in the chamors. But God, what are you saying about the chamors? I find the cross. I see Christ on the cross. I want to know nothing among you except Christ and Him crucified. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 2. So you don't want to know all the hamars. You don't want, you want to see where is Christ crucified, what he did for you on the cross. And therefore you can know the resurrected Christ because you know who is the crucified Christ. Amen. Amen. Then what will happen? Then you can turn. What? God will hear from heaven. He doesn't hear you. 
Oh, he, he hears everything. He knows. He hears every thought. Even before you are thinking it, the word says. God knows what you're going to think. That's not freaky, but that's amazing. But unfortunately, <clears throat> he knows what is coming, but still he's willing to forgive and to look ahead with you, with what he has for you. Are, are you here? He will hear from heaven. That here is, there will be an open heaven. You humble, you pray, connect with God of grace, you focus on him, you turn into accuracy, you will see the open heavens over your life, open heavens over the city, open heavens over that school, man, where you must make a difference, open heavens there at university, open heavens where you go, you can see open heavens because you understand how to be in that place where God has called you to be. Are you here? I will hear from heaven. What is God saying? There will be an open heaven over your life because you're supposed to pray on earth as it is in heaven. On earth, Lord, as you dreamt about my business, let it be in my business like you planned my business in heaven. If you started your business in the name of the Lord and it was God's will, then that business didn't start on earth. That business starts in heaven. And there's a business for you in heaven and on earth in my business as it is in heaven. In this hospital as it is in heaven. In my work, in, in, in the finances that I do, in the, the medicine work that I have, in whatever, in the counseling that I do. The way that you saw me doing counseling, the way that you saw me doing this business, the way that you saw me studying and enter into this whatever, whatever job. Let it be so. On earth, I must walk it. I must walk the work that you've planned for me in heaven. The way you saw my work in heaven, let my work be as you've planned it, as you saw it in heaven. So it can be for your life. It's the work that you're going to do tomorrow, the way that you study, the way that you sit in that place and do your studies. Is it the way that God wants it, you to do it? Is it the way that he saw it how it must happen in heaven. Only if you have the guts to humble yourself, position yourself in prayer before God, seek his face in what you do, and turn from that what is not right. You will have an open heaven to see how your business must be as God planned it in heaven. Are you with me? I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins. So you will not be in trouble anymore. No, that forgiveness is so much more than just you will not be in trouble anymore. That forgiveness is God's grace, God's enablement, God's mercy, God's practical help. God's practical help, God's enablement will be there. There will be new opportunity through the blood. And life can be so much more valuable, precious, and meaningful because of the word forgive. And then, out of that, heal the land. Heal the land. So that what? When the heal, uh, land is healed, you can go to heaven. No. Heal the land now so that from a place of a healthy relationship with people, healthy relationship with yourself and with God, you can have a life. You can have a life that has value. That's God's dream for you. That's God's heart for you. And in that life, you and him are doing life. Not surviving, try to have enough money so that end of the month there's food. Oh, but that's practical. No, you start with provision. His name is Jesus Christ. It's not, it's not super spiritual. You let provision have a voice in you. The provision in you that is more than enough with a cup that runs over. That provision in you has a name. It's called the El Shajai, the Jehovah Jireh, the God that is more than enough who's living in you. Provision from heaven is living in you. But if you don't yield to his voice, to his strategies, the strategies are the provision from heaven that is called Jesus Christ. If you don't yield to that, yeah, it's time to stress. <laughs> seek him. Seek him. Turn. God will bring that healing. Heaven's provision will touch you. But if it's not a handout from heaven, catch, phew, and there you, you prayed and you got the provision from heaven. But if provision is in the person and you embrace the person that's called provision 
El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, and you walk with a shepherd, nothing, you will lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd. I walk with my shepherd. I walk with my provision. He's called Jesus Christ. And then you can have a life. And not try to have provision. And work your freck so that there is type of provision. And then blame others why things are like this. Okay, God's going to help you. He's going to help me. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Oh, that sounds like a little bit reprimanding. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. God can see everywhere. And so how can I take it out of his sight? Because he can see in the dark. He can see everywhere. It's like the way that you bring deeds before him and you think it was for the Lord. You bring it before him and you think, I've done this for the Lord. I've done this with God. No, I'm just, I just did that what he's expected of me. Okay, have that life. But that's a life without Christ. It's a shame. Christ is living in you and you're going to ignore him. And you're just going to do what is expected of you. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble. We will not call it pathetic, uh, even though it is, because you have the, the mind of Christ. Amen. So may God help us. I take the evil deeds away. I cannot bring it before God as an offering as he, unto the Lord. No, evil deeds, I take it away. Where am I taking it? To the cross, to the cross, to the cross. As the cross is dealt with, it must be crucified. It must be dead. It must die. Die Hamors must die. It mustn't have a voice. It mustn't have an impact in my life anymore. Amen. That's through the power of the cross. I can take that rubbish there. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Okay, next one. The, just the one after this one. <laughs> just teasing. Remember this. Remember. Everybody say remember. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of his way will save him from death and cover a multitude of sins. Remember, that what does that mean? It means you're not necessarily going to remember it. Uh, are you here? If God says remember, it means like you're not necessarily going to remember. So when you go to school tomorrow, when you go to varsity, when you go and work, um, you're not going to remember that there's sinners that's on their way to go and burn in hell, and you're supposed to have an impact in their life. You're not going to remember that just automatically. That's why you must be commanded to remember it. Maybe we can remind one another about that. Remember, whoever turns a sinner from the way, his way, will save him from death and cover a multitude of sin. May we have that unselfish uh, way of thinking. Now, there's other scriptures that we passed that I must just quickly give you, if you can write that down. Um, oh, when I say that one. Okay, we have found the one. I have not found anything, any of your works, meeting the requirements in his sight. Amen? We talked about that. Did we talk about that? That was the revelation. Okay. Sorry. For the sake of time, for those who pray for a shorter uh, service, <laughs> your prayer worked, it seems to me. Okay. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> Let's just go. We as Christ's personal representatives beg you for his sake to lay hold of the divine favor now offered you and be reconciled and be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. What are we saying? You're supposed to be an ambassador. That's personal representatives talking about ambassadors. Ambassadors of Christ. That same scripture, please go and read 2 Corinthians 5. That whole chapter is it's amazing. The depth of, of this coming through that chapter. He says that God has entrusted us with the ministry of reconciliation. Now, reconciliation through repentance, reconciliation through repentance, hello? And God trusts you with a ministry of reconciliation. That means you're going to minister to people so that they know how to repent. Not minister to them so that they feel condemned. Not so that they know and feel how to be condemned. Yes, if I speak to some, some, some students 
Some of them, the word says, it will be like a fragrance from Christ. And for others, it's talking about it will be like a stench unto death. It will be the smell of death. For those who don't want to receive it, uh, you will find it. I spoke this week to, uh, some, uh, to the students about some stuff. And I could see at that moment, I believe he's not like that anymore. I could, be, uh, I could see some are taking it like a fragrance and some are taking it like a stench from death. I hope, I believe, they change. You, you know when you give some input to somebody and their whole face is miserable and when they look at you still he's miserable and he's miserable. And maybe you could have said it other way or this way or that way but at the end of the day they need to go before the Lord and decide was it a fresh aroma from him or was it a stench from hell and is it a stench because I don't want to change then that stench is because the, the, the smell of your own flesh so let's rather cut the flesh out you know let's cut the flesh out it was not somebody necessarily here, you know, but some naughty dog from Peter that went into the kitchen and they, they took some chicken. <laughs> naughty, naughty dog. When you walk past him, say, naughty dog. <laughs> no, no, no don't, don't try and do that. But if it wasn't the dog and it was some people, I, I pray that the word will be a stench in their life. Until they repent. Macht het een stank in hulle lewe wees, in hulle harte, in hulle koppe, in hulle woorde, in hulle verhouding. Een stank totdat hulle tot de kering kom. Oh, but when I'm open to receive the word, it becomes a fresh aroma. The same word. We can speak a word right now. And for half of them, the guys, it will be like a stench. And half of them, it will be like an aroma. See some street preachers, especially in America and Europe, some of these places. How other people are manifesting, like demons manifesting. And how they want to just... You with me? But in the church it doesn't happen. It's just inside. You know? But the face is like, hello pastor. Oh man, what a joke. Look in the mirror and call yourself, joke. Okay, this is not for you. That's for people that must work through these things. I beg you, for his sake, to lay hold of the divine favor. I beg you. Everybody say, beg you. Beg. When last did you beg someone? In? I'm not talking about for food or money. Beg someone to be reconciled with God. You know, there's a parent, there's a granny. And maybe the, in, in the township, there's, oh man, in the township, there's some, some grannies. Powerful, powerful gold in their hearts. And they need to raise the kids. They need to raise the grandkids. The kids are gone. They did this. The man is gone. And this and that. And the red rubbish. But there's some pot of gold. Some of those grannies. And how they beg the Lord. How they come to with intensity before, the God, before God for their grandchildren. For situations. Hello. Representatives of Christ, ambassadors of Christ, in so many simplistic ways. You better respect the elders. We respect that granny. Even if she sometimes tune you and you think he's tuned in the wrong way. She didn't love me. She just spoke to me like if I'm a, like a dog or something. You don't go and judge her. Just, just hear her heart. Because sometimes when there's a, a begging in here, you will find a father and a mother. And then maybe you want to beg your child, please don't do this. Please don't do this. Please don't. Because you know what could happen. And because you love that person, you want to beg him. Now, the word says, if you're a representative of Christ, there will be this begging in your heart. Because you carry Bloemfontein. You carry your family. You carry your friends. If you call them really friends and not fake whatever. You will carry those friends. You will carry your family in, inside of you. And somewhere you will open your mouth and you will beg them even to receive Christ. How many people in your life did you beg? 
plead with him. Plead with him. The word, other translation. He pleads by Allah that they will be reconciled with Christ. Don't, don't, don't get freaky spiritual now. I'm very sorry. That's in the word. Get it somewhere in. You know, but unfortunately, when we walk with other chamors, and we are, we are ambassadors of bitterness, we are ambassadors of my opinion, we are ambassadors of, of whatever compromise and justification, oh, you can put some intensity in there. The guy that cannot go without a cigarette, no condemnation, but you're going to stop that rubbish. Amen? Amen. Uh, yeah. You're going to stop that, 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 that drinking or that what? We're going to stop that. Stop that pornog pornography, Hamas, man. I pray that your phone will break. <laughs> By the Lord, grace of the Lord. No. All the broken phones afterwards, VIP, can you just take it? <laughs> no. No. Uh, uh, what am I saying, Emil? All right, the was no. What I want to say. Ah! So, I've seen that many times. And that guy come and he beg you for a cigarette. You've seen that? Beg you for a cigarette. Oh, that guy. And it's not easy. I understand, man. Oh, come on. When the devil has caught you in that, I'm not looking down at you. I know you have a battle. You have a battle, and God's going to help you. God's going to help you. I have a different battle. What is my battle, Emil? Oh, okay. Shh. Maybe you will expose me. Uh. <laughs> but, amen, there's certain things that we must do, and then when you see, then you are busy with. You are busy, but you're not with the Lord busy. Busy where the Lord is busy. Are you with me? So in each one of our lives, first of all, you beg for your own life. You beg for your own life to be found in Christ. Become desperate, become so fed up with the rubbish in your life that you beg God, God, this needs to change my life now. And God will show you then. You go and speak to that guy and he pray with you every day. Or you go and be accountable about this rubbish. Or you, hello? Or you get into the scriptures. Or you get this, or you, or you get that. Or you do that. Are you still here? God will help you. God will help me. But we all need His help. Amen? To be reconciled to God. And you can only take them if you know the way. If you know how to repent yourself. If you yourself know with intensity how to repent and get into the right place. Then you can ask and, and beg others also to come in this, into this road. Follow me as I follow Christ. That means, it doesn't mean you need to be perfect. Otherwise, I have nothing to say. But if you know the direction, why will you not say it? Why will you not show it? Huh? Tell your flesh. Tell that negativity. Tell that depression. Say, hey, what are you doing? I'm not depressed. I have the life of Christ in me. The joy of the Lord is my strength. But this depression is real. This, this Hamor's thoughts is real, so I must address it. God will help you. Last one. Are we at the last one? Looks like that. Was it the last one? I've been uh, called to repentance, not to carry on about anything further. I... If you want to put down uh, the message of reconciliation that's committed to us, you need to be committed to what God has committed to you. Let's say, I need to be committed to what God committed to me. And he says, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19. You have it? And then the one that I want to throw in there. Lord have mercy. It's somewhere there. All right. Take words with you. Everybody say, take words with you. And return. Okay. Return to the Lord. Say to him, forgive. And receive us gracefully. Graciously. He's going to leave it there. That's in Hosea. Those of you who want to write it down. Hosea 14. 
verse 2 and 3. And then he says, say to him, we will never again say our gods to what our hands have made. We will never again say to God, we will never again say it to this business as my security. Now, now, now I have enough money for me and my children. Be careful what you say in your heart. Be careful what you say in your head. Be careful what you say with, you, with your mouth. But take words with you. Learn. And what is the words that you must speak before God? Take the word of God and put it in your mouth and bring that as the words before your Lord. Amen. God, by your mercy, you have said, you have said, and we can only come through the blood and through what you have said. That's how we can enter. And please, Lord, let this word be fulfilled because the word, this word will not return void, will not return empty to you, Lord. Get your prayer in line with these words that you take the words, put it on your lips and say to the Lord. And that scripture, he says, the prophet says, how you need to repent. What is correct words on your lips to repent? Say to the Lord, we will not do this. We will not do this. We will not say about our works. Now, who's going around saying, my work is my God. No, nobody is so stupid. Nobody is saying that. But if you focus more on your work, and God must help you in your work first, instead of you seeking him. If he is at all in your work, then you need to change this, what's coming from your mouth. Huh? Are you still here? May God help you, because with this mouth is a what? Rudder. Rudder for the ship. And with this word, you turn the ship. The ship will go there. Are you with me? So make sure. Take the right words so that you will direct the ship in the storm into the right direction. Because in that storm you don't know where is north, south, east, west. Nothing. But inside is a compass. Inside. Because of the word inside of you. You just know that you know that you know north. And you must go that direction. And you take the ship with the people that God has placed in your life. The ship is maybe full of a lot of, a lot of other students in your class, a lot, of, a lot of other scholars, a lot of other guys that you walk past, some guys there in pick and pay when you go past there. Hello, you go, you go, and you speak to those people. Many times, getting out of a restaurant or walking in the mall and go to this guy. God has a great plan for your life, but you need to follow it. You need to stop arguing about it. It happened that I would speak to some young guys that the mother would start to cry. Not necessarily the son, but many times, you, you know. <laughs> what is this guy saying? But, oh man, go and have some awesome times. There where you buy something at the OK or the spa or the whatever. Go and have a good time. Go to the bottle store, you know, and buy some Coke. And then you speak to a few guys. <laughs> No, 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 not with the message of reconciliation. Not repent, not to burn in hell. Repent for, rec uh, for reconciliation in a relationship with God. Amen. God, you are awesome. Father, I pray that you will come through your mercy with each one of us, that we will understand that what you want to do in our, through our lives, Lord. God, through your cross, through your spirit, through your word, we know the way. Every man, woman in this place, they know the way. They know the way through your word and through your spirit. Come and impart in them through your spirit. This capacity to understand how to walk in a lifestyle of repentance. To come into to an excellent quality lifestyle with significance in their life, Lord. Through Jesus Christ. I pray that we will understand how to remember. To remember what you have done in our lives. But also to remember what happened wrong. To be honest enough Lord. So that we understand humility. So that we understand prayer. So that we understand how to seek you. Not first seek answers. But to seek you Lord. God and if you are not there we don't want it. If you are not in our business. If you are not in that finances. If you are not in that opportunity. 
open our eyes so that we can see, Lord, that we will not go for that excellent opportunity if you are not in it. Help us to get into your word and into your presence so that we can see you and do what is pleasing in your sight. Burn away everything, everything that is not from you, hell. Help us, Lord, in that. We ask that for every man, woman in this place as we proclaim a significant, quality, meaningful life for each one in Jesus' name. And all say, Amen. Amen. Give yourself a hug, a very good hug.